Nem. Nem. Bam. Jackalov. What's next? Play just got serious in the all-new Toyota Avalon. It's college soccer. Visiting Alabama meets LSU. At the top of our telecast, let's look at up to the moment Southeastern Conference standings. Vanderbilt is the only undefeated team in league play at 3-0, and losers have only one of 11 matches this year. Alabama and LSU near the bottom of the pack at the moment. We bring you inside the LSU soccer complex with former Georgia Southern standout and LSU assistant coach Debbie Hensley. I'm Lynn Rollins. Match four tonight in SEC play for both of these teams, Debbie. Alabama and LSU are looking to break into the win column. Well, the LSU-Alabama series has always been one for the ages. In seven of the last eight meetings, these two teams have played to double overtime draws, including each of the last two years. After dropping their first game at home this year, LSU has not lost on their home turf. I would imagine this rivalry is only going to get stronger tonight. Well, let's take a look at some comparison numbers. You'll see that Alabama has scored twice as many goals as LSU. But 21 of those 28 have come against four non-conference opponents. And the challenge for LSU is going to be to score more goals. While they've been very strong defensively, they need more offensive production. So tonight on the SEC ESPN Network from Baton Rouge, it's the Alabama Crimson Tide meeting the LSU Tigers on the pitch on the campus at LSU. Soccer is next. It's been a great day in Baton Rouge. A lot of rain has fallen, but fortunately, none of the wet stuff is hitting the turf right now. The Alabama Crimson Tide, 6-5-1 and one overall, winless in three SEC matches against the LSU Tigers, 6-4-1 and four and one overall, 0-2-1 in SEC play. The last time LSU played on this pitch, it was a thrilling double overtime nil match between Auburn. There's Wes Hart. In his fourth season as Alabama head coach, 27 wins, 28 losses, six draws. The Alabama lineup looks like this. Among the starters tonight, Abby Boswell has three goals and five assists. A name you don't see is Casey Wirtz. Wirtz is the leading point producer for Alabama with six goals. 
She will not start tonight, but we are told that she will enter the fray uh, as this match moves on. Alex Plavin has four shutouts in goal for Alabama and a 1.04 average goals against. There's Brian Lee on the LSU bench. His 14th season as LSU head coach. 136 victories, a 55.7 winning percentage. And, of course, Caroline Brockmeyer is the anchor in goal. Brockmeyer with seven shutouts so far. 21 career shutouts for this uh, senior from Tallahassee, Florida. And the leading point producer, Adrian Richardson, four goals and one assist for LSU. So, Debbie, we have had a lot of extra soccer between these teams over the last decade or so. We'll see if Lanyap soccer again comes our way tonight. But both of these teams are desperate for an SEC win. Uh, Definitely. These two teams have very similar records. They have very similar resumes coming into this match. Both teams are very hungry to get a win in the SEC. LSU in white controls it first. And we are underway. No weather delays anticipated after a lot of rain earlier in Baton Rouge today. Fortunately, the thunderstorms never developed. This field drains very well. It's the Bermuda hybrid turf. And uh, it, it uh, should be overall in, in excellent condition. And it's been, what, an hour, hour and a half since the last raindrops fell. So, Debbie, I'm pretty sure that this, uh, this turf, which will improve as the night goes on, is very playable right now. The turf is definitely in great shape. You can look around. There's no standing puddles. Uh, players haven't seen rain in long enough. That, that's completely out of their minds at this point. LSU in the white. Molly Thompson taking it down. And it will belong to the Tigers. There's Brian Lee on the LSU bench. Tanea Alexander, the sophomore from Reading, England, enters it, and it's promptly kicked away. You see LSU in that satin white and those teal-colored numerals this is uh the annual teal designated ovarian cancer awareness game for lsu and as most lsu women's uh, sports teams do over the course of an academic year uh bringing attention to ovarian cancer it's always fun for players to get to put on a uniform that's a little different than their everyday jersey that they wear it adds a little extra excitement in the locker room Marlena Chudera, who handles almost 100% of the corner kicks, is ambidextrous. She'll kick it from the right side with her left leg. And, of course, with her uh, left leg from the right side. So it doesn't matter which corner. She can uh, slice it or hook it. You could see LSU's really come out into this game with an attacking mindset. Uh, like we talked about in the uh, lead-in, they really have probably been focusing on, hey, we have got to score more goals. We've got to get on the board. And, you know, it looks like that's something that uh, they're trying to get going as early as possible with some good attacks already. 14 goals in 11 matches is just not enough to win consistently despite the goalkeeping brilliance of Brockmeyer and the overall very effective defense by LSU. They have a lot of shutouts, and shutouts are great, and you get very excited about them, but in order to win the games, you've got to put the ball in the net. Alexander appeared to whiff on that swing, but it will stay with the Tigers. see a, a change that, that LSU has made coming into this match is uh, Alex Thomas, who has been playing defense uh, most games this season, is up front. So, you know, that might be just a little change of scenery for the team. Hey, let's go ahead and put Alex Thomas up here. She's spent plenty of time as a forward. Let's get her up here and see if she can add a little extra jolt to the team. She does bring a physicality to the field. One goal this year, but playing mostly as a backline defender. Chudera had it on her foot for the moment. LSU will control. Reese Moffitt runs it down, the freshman from Langley, British Columbia, Canada. If you've just joined us, we have just started. Alabama in red, LSU in white.
There's Wes Hart already working up a sweat on this humid evening. Fortunately, the temperature here has ameliorated a little bit. It's not in that mid-90 range that we have become accustomed to through uh, what has been a very hot September. Especially after you have some heavy rain, normally it really increases the temperature around here, but uh, it seems as though it has rained and the temperature has you know, maintained or even dropped a little bit this evening, which how, I'm sure about, is very nice. How about 75 degrees at kickoff tonight, which is uh, by far the coolest start time that LSU has enjoyed this year. Do you think that means it's officially fall? Uh, no. No. That's wishful thinking around Louisiana. Alabama has yet to apply any pressure on the LSU defense. The Tigers take it away, send it ahead to Alex Thomas. Thomas on the run. Let's see how Thomas leaves it to the left side. Left-footed kick. Yes! Goal! Adrian Richardson from Alex Thomas. Alex Thomas, insertion on the front line, immediately plays dividends. A perfect pass to her teammate Richardson on the left side. The fifth goal of the season for Adrian Richardson. What a fantastic pass by Alex Thomas. She could have gone straight to goal, but she saw her teammate striding down there wide open and slotted the ball across to her in a great finish. Wonderful goal. And I, I love the the... You know, what you get out of making a change, it's risky. Alex has been a defender all season. But, you know, saying, hey, let's put her up front. Let's see if this can add a little extra offensive jolt to our team. And look at this. It, it happened. It's the first assist for Thomas this year. She had a goal earlier. The LSU Tigers take a one nothing lead over Alabama. Adrian Richardson with her fifth goal of the year off the assist from Alex Thomas, and that was brilliantly played once Thomas created that opportunity on the breakaway. And you could see Alabama, had, they just took the kickoff and said, no, right back at you. You know, from a coaching standpoint, always you say, you know, right after a goal is scored, those next couple minutes are the most vital minutes because that's when the other team kind of feels a little bit of stress come off and, you know, hey, now we can breathe a little bit. We scored a goal. Well, you know, the last thing you need to do is be relaxing and breathing. I've heard you speak so often over Adrian Richardson's knack for getting in the right place at the right time to deliver a quality shot. She certainly did not give up on the play when she saw the breakaway by her teammate Thomas. And that was a fantastic example. You know, when you don't notice her is when she is getting where she needs to be. And, and you know, I bet everybody watching assumed Alex Thomas was going to dribble the ball straight to goal and shoot and she had she could see that her teammate was striding along and Adrian could have easily just let Alex go on her own but she was right there with her so LSU when it scores first this uh, year or at least in the first half has had some success and the Tigers indeed take a one nothing lead over Alabama assist to Thomas goal to Richardson and LSU still trying to regroup after that goal. Uh, Alabama took the kickoff, and they have pretty much been putting the pressure on ever since. Lucy Parker works it up. Eaton tries the entry. It's rejected at the box. Tigers again. Molly Thompson tries to reverse it. It's picked off by Alabama. An opportunity here, and a shot slithers off to the left side. There's a good pick off right there. And it's a good opportunity by her. Sometimes you got a lot of players in front of you. You can shoot, and the goalkeeper can be blinded by all the bodies. That, that was a good, good chance. Yeah, 
LSU has been the aggressor in the early going. Molly Thompson loses it. It's picked off by Abby Boswell, but back to LSU. Lucy Parker chips it to the left side. Cross pitch pass on the foot of Thompson, and it will stay with LSU. Molly Thompson, a freshman from Homa, with one goal this year. There's only one other match in the Southeastern Conference tonight. Missouri is at Arkansas. Newton will put it in play from Fleming Island to Florida. Alexander, the best dribbler on the team, fakes left, dribbles right, sets it up with the opposite foot. Look at her go to work, but it's taken away. Very nice determined defense by Emma Welch. Boy, that's a battle that's fun to watch. It sure is, and her, her feet just move so fast. I think at that point right there, she should have just kept going. She had her player beat, she had her player off balance, but when she checked it back up, gave the defender an opportunity to kind of get back in place. Boswell on the attack, trying to set it up. Beach one defender gets inside the box, shoots, saved by Brockmeyer. That was a great shot at the top of the box. Good dribbling. I think after uh, Brockmeyer gets this ball off, she might be telling her defense, hey, you guys have to get on her a little quicker. And it, shooting from right in the middle at the top of the box is very dangerous. How much communication or urging or cheerleading or cajoling is there from a goalkeeper to the rest of her teammates in terms of let's do this or help me here or this needs to be done before they advance this far? You know, really the goalkeeper should be the number one communicator on the team because they have the vantage point of seeing the entire field. They can see everything in front of them. So, you know, they, they have the op a unique opportunity to speak. And here you go. She's got – she took a great angle at that where defenders were kind of coming in from behind. But that is the one spot you don't want people shooting, right at the top of the box in the middle and you saw Brockmeyer get up with the ball cradled in her hand, telling a couple of teammates something on the side of her mouth, you know, by saying, you know, I don't know what the direction was, but evidently, as you mentioned, she probably said something about the defense needs to pick up earlier in the charge. Yeah, they need to have, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of types of communication, and sometimes that communication is really to yell at defenders like, hey, that's not okay, you got to get on them. You know, Seven shutouts for Brockmeyer this year and 21 in her career. So many goals can be prevented just by simple communication. So it's in, it's in the goalkeeper's best benefit to be communicating as much as possible because, you know, they can, they can prevent a lot of things from happening just by talking and getting the players in the right spots. Brockmeyer, seven shutouts this year, the third most in the NCAA. And she's coming off a performance on this pitch with 11 saves, including three or four, which were spectacular against Auburn at point blank range. And that was a great run right there by Abby Boswell. Um, resulting in a corner kick. This is a lot of corner kicks for Alabama so far. Um, I, I see that uh, LSU is doing a better job of bringing defenders out on these corner kicks. At first they were going two on one and um, they needed some more people down there defending. Alabama trying to keep it alive inside the box. And now a reset of the offense. An early goal in the first period by Richardson from the assist by Thomas. That was a tumble by Emma Welch. Watch this. Yeah, certainly the LSU player was 
definitely trying to shield the ball out of bounds. But I think, you know, due to the, the soft ground, the ball was moving out of bounds a little faster, I mean, a little slower than she thought it was going to. So, you know, she ended up doing a little more shielding than legal. Welch with a couple of goals and a couple of assists out of McDonough, Georgia. And this is a free kick, but in essence, it's really just a glorified corner kick. LSU should defend it the same way they would defend any corner kick. Christina Martinson from Stockholm, Sweden, will put it in play. She's had one goal this year. And that one rolls over the top of the net. It appears that Brock Meyer must have tipped the ball on that, and therefore we've got another corner kick coming. And she gets her hand up right here. Hard to tell, but uh, certainly called a, another corner kick. Brock Meyer started her career at Florida State. She actually was a redshirt freshman on a Florida State National Championship team a few years ago. Here's the entry, and Brock Meyer snares it. It's one of her best traits is coming out on balls like that and just catching it straight out of the air. It this really, is Alex really Thomas out. out in front of the ball. The pass is cut off, intended for Thomas, but easily taken away by Alabama. Adrian Richardson trying to reciprocate the pass that Alex Thomas made to her earlier. And maybe a count or two late on that pass. LSU in white with the teal colored numerals. Alabama in red, trailing one nothing. LSU with an early goal by Richardson, off an assist by Alex Thomas. We are one third through the first period. Burr Paley, the freshman out of Cocoa Beach, Florida, had it on her foot. It goes back to LSU. You know, I noticed I commented earlier about the, the ground maybe playing a little bit slower, and it does appear that it is, which is very, very normal when you've had some heavy rain. You know, if the rain's recent, sometimes the ball moves fast because there's puddles. Well, this field doesn't actually have puddles, but the field is soft, so the ball seems to be moving a little bit slower than maybe some of these players might be used to. Um, hence, some of the passes that maybe look like they're a little, sh little too short. Um, and, you know, that's something these players will get used to as they get out here and play. Alexander sends it down in the offensive zone. Tigers tried to leave it for Tudor, but it was taken away. That's intercepted by Tanea Alexander. Down she goes. No foul. Alabama coming the other way. And that entry skids its way downfield. Picked off by LSU and deflected out of bounds. It will stay with the Tigers, it appears. This is Alexander a, and a good clean tackle. That was a good tackle by Taylor Morgan. She got her whole body down in there and um, got the ball popped up really quick and was able to play. Brockmeyer looking for her eighth shutout. Right now, LSU protecting a 1-0 lead against Alabama. Was a good good opportunity there. It was a good cross. I think it might have surprised Molly Thompson the way that ball came through. 
There's Neely Martin. She had, quite honestly, a brush with death as a high schooler. She was struck by lightning while, while tubing with some high school teammates in a river and, and fortunately survived it and obviously is completely healthy now, but certainly a very traumatic event uh, for her. I can't say I've ever known anyone that's been struck by lightning. And certainly when people are telling stories, she probably has the best story of anyone. That was a good run by Lucy Parker, and she did get the call from the referee. However, she might she might be holding on to the ball a little bit too long. I think LSU would probably like to see her try to release that ball a little bit earlier. And we got a free kick from midfield right here. How much do teams work on set pieces from free kicks from various areas of the pitch? A lot, every day. Over and over again every day. You you would be surprised uh, to know how many goals come off of set pieces because you spend so much time on you know everything on the field and then so many goals come out of set pieces, whether it be free kicks, penalty kicks, um, corner kicks. Um, so many of them come from set pieces. That was a good run. Tanea Alexander is very fast. She's going to be a hard one to run past. She's one of the faster players on this LSU team. Emma Welch penetrated deep, but uh, got the defensive uh, help, did LSU, from Alexander. Let's see if the Tigers can mount a run here. This is Richardson. Adrian stutters, winds up, sends it to the corner, and just misses beyond the left pipe. Just wide. I, I like that she continued going forward. Some players in a situation like that might might take the ball and sort. That was a great job right there, just to, to strip it from her. Um, she kept moving. Some players might slow it up right here and kind of wait for some help, but she she just kept plowing forward, and it was a great shot. Um, just a little wide. And that one took a little bit of a left turn as it approached that pipe and slithered wide. In our open tonight, Debbie, you stressed the need for LSU to become aggressive to be an attacking team offensively. We've seen a bit more of that tonight in the first period than perhaps some other matches tonight uh, this year. Yeah, I think it builds a lot of confidence to get on the board early because, you know, as a player, you, you kind of see that clock just kind of tick, tick, Tick. And especially if you're if you're lacking in any kind of confidence, or hey, are we you know we're struggling to score? Are we going to be able to score? To get on that board early and put that confidence in in each other, and yes, we can. You know, I, I think that does a lot for them here tonight. LSU with a nice job of holding possession. And reversing the ball. This is uh, Alexander from one sideline to the other. Takes it back during the middle. And she's double teamed, it's poked away. Here comes Alabama, Boswell trying to line it up. Boswell looking for a teammate on her left. Instead swings it to the right side. Back on the delay, this is Morgan and it bounces into the hands of Brockmeyer. I think Alabama would probably want to try to penetrate a little bit more, maybe look for one more pass to get, a, get that opportunity to be a little better. Um, it was a great job attacking. They need some more numbers to get down there with them, and they need they need to be able to get that extra pass to really good a, get a good shot. Casey Wirtz, the leading goal producer for Alabama, with six on the on the season, did not start tonight, but she is waiting to check in. You know, when your leading scorer is not on the field, you know, I would anticipate when she does make the substitution into the game, it's going to cause a little bit of a, uh, a positive, you know, up for her team because they're going to know, okay, here comes our leading scorer on the team. You know, other players will start thinking, okay, we're, we're getting ready to score now. And a free kick coming for LSU. This is a really tough spot for a free kick.
We were at the midway point of the first period. LSU won. Alabama nothing. Alex Thomas on a breakaway. Fed Adrian Richardson with a beautiful assist. And Richardson guided it home relatively early in the first period. Her Paley ran that down, it's rejected. And now it appears as though Casey Wirtz, with six goals to her credit, is in for Alabama. Cat Rogers also checks in for the Crimson Tide. We were not told why Wirtz did not start. We were told she would play, and she is in the game midway in the first half. That's nicely centered by Boswell, but nobody home for Alabama. You know, she turned that ball so fast and crossed it so fast, I think she might have surprised her team with how well she did that. Debbie, let's explain the uh, the first half substitution rules again. You don't see as many substitutions in the first half normally as you do the second, and there's a reason for that. The substitution rules for college soccer are as follows. In the first half, there is no re-entry. So what that means is if you come out of the match in the first half, you can't go back in until after halftime. So that's why you don't see as many substitutions in the first half. Um, in the second half, you're allowed one re-entry. So what will happen is you'll have your starters at the second half. They'll come out maybe halfway through that half, get a drink of water, get a rest, and then you want to get them back in the game to end it. So um, you oftentimes see players play the full 45 minutes of the first half. Welch angles that one toward Brockmeyer, and she makes the easy save. You know, along those lines, if you see players get hurt in the first half, oftentimes they might come off and no substitute comes in for them. And, you know, a lot of fans often think, well, you're playing a man down. You're playing 10 versus 11. But, you know, it's worth it if, if they need to come off for one minute just to get assessed real quick and jump back on the field. You might not want to burn that substitution. That apparently was touched last by Tudorup, and Alabama quickly throws it in play. Nice defense in front of the net. That would have put Brockmeyer in a very compromised position, but she got some excellent help from out front. And luckily for LSU, this is just outside of the box, or it would be a penalty kick. It's still a very dangerous play for Alabama. Alabama has had six shots, five of them on goal. Welch is number eight. A lot of contact in front of that net. Brockmeyer has come up with it. That looked like a fumble recovery. That did. I couldn't tell where it was going. With 10 or 12 players all fighting for it. The initial shot uh, on that free kick was it was very good. It was hard to handle, um, and that's what created that. Here we go. It's like a great shot right there. So many players in that area. Brockmeyer obviously gets to use her hands, and she was brave to come down there and land on that ball. That takes bravery because you got people's feet kicking at it and everything else, and there you can see she smothered it. It was a great job. Alabama, over the last 10 minutes or so, has become more aggressive offensively and certainly has picked up the pace with its attack, Brockmeyer has been tested in the first half. Oh, 
Riley Mattingly rolls it over the baseline. 17 minutes and some change remain in the first period. The difference in this match in the first half is Adrian Richardson's goal from the assist by Alex Thomas. 1-0 LSU. Alabama's midfielders have really had a lot of positive success with picking up the ball in the middle of the field and dribbling at speed at LSU's back line. I know Abby Boswell's done it a couple times. Taylor Morgan's done it a couple times. And uh, they seem to be having a lot of success doing that. And they started the game, Alabama did, with five midfielders. Alexander sizes up the defender, rolls it down inside the box. The center pass coming and rejected. Good team defense by Alabama, but an opportunity here. And that ball is popped up off the foot. That was a great cross. Petrie. That was a great cross by Jade Clark. I'm, I'm not really sure how she was able to get that off. She was at a very strange angle, and it was a great cross. Here comes Alabama, though, with just over under 16 minutes left of the first period. Right there is what I'm talking about. She picks up the ball right in the middle, middle of the field and attacks them with pace. They've been doing that over and over again and getting a lot of success from it. And Abby Boswell is who I keep seeing doing it quite often. Arkansas has taken a 1-0 lead over Missouri. They play in Fayetteville tonight, and that has moved to the second half. That is the only other Southeastern Conference game tonight. Welch sends it to Taylor Morgan. Verpaley centers it. And it is defended nicely by Lucy Parker. This is Tudora. Punches it ahead, but nobody is there. That's a great pass right there to free Adrian Richardson, and she's going to go at speed Richardson at the back line. from Newton. And Chrissy Petrie is going to send the ball in the box. Possession will belong to LSU. Alex Thomas, the three-year letter winner out of New Orleans, who has an assist tonight, her first of the year, will put it in play for the Tigers. LSU is coming off a 4-1 to loss in Gainesville against Florida. The last time LSU played on this pitch, was September 20th against number nine Auburn. A very thrilling double extra period, nil finish. It was a very exciting tie. I know a lot of people get frustrated with ties, but if they're gonna be as exciting as that tie was, I think maybe some people could accept them. This allows me to do my- <laughs> I'm talking ga about you. Ga gamely. <laughs> My my my, my uh, editorial comment. I, I really wish college soccer would go to the go to the shootout scenario as they do, obviously in postseason play. And I do understand your point and the point of other soccer coaches that you've worked hard for a tie. You ought to get a point or two in the in the standings for it. I, I say give the give the, the the give each team a point, and then the winning team gets two more in the shootout. So you get your point for the tie but the winning team gets three. You know, uh, that's an interesting concept. I don't think you're gonna get far with it, <laughs> um, but I know that it would be exciting for the fans. I know fans everywhere love a penalty kick shootout. Um, you know, no matter how many times you've seen them, it's still exciting. 
but really they're only used for advancement. And you know they they don't you still don't get a win when you win a penalty kick shootout. So if you're in tournament and there's a tie after double overtime in the record book, it goes down as a tie. The penalty kick shootout is simply who's going to advance. You still don't get the win. I would change that too. <laughs> we need to put you I, I, on the I, soccer rules committee. I can make it work. <laughs> This is a bipartisan opinion. <laughs> the corner kick is headed away by LSU. So what's wrong? After 90 minutes, you're tied. Each team gets a point. And then the winning team in a shootout gets two more. So the winning team gets three. You count it as a legitimate win. The team that lost the game but does advance into the shootout that's a point as well. What does it go down in as on your record? A, a win, win and a loss. The winning team wins. The losing team goes in the well, L you're, you're still, you're still. Yeah, but I'm giving you a point. You're still, uh, you're giving me the point in my SEC in the standings, standings mm -hmm. but you're not giving me a win on my record. I mean, you are, you're, you're giving me a loss or a win when really it's a tie. I don't think you're going to win this argument with me. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go to a shootout, I bet you. <laughs> this argument. <laughs> this is the teal game observed by the LSU soccer team. It's also observed by the basketball team, the softball team, and other LSU women's sports in an effort to educate and bring awareness to ovarian cancer. Very rare. You see a lot of pink games these days, and, and uh, like you said, uh, that, that is definitely something that's been uh, taken and on here at LSU by I many think, of the teams. I think Reese Moffitt's scratch on that right knee is uh, has drawn the attention of the officials. They're going to bring her off the field to get a bandage on that. And you see the uh, abrasion on Reese Moffitt's knee. She's the freshman from British Columbia. Rebecca Friedrich is the center referee. The assistant referee is Alyssa Pennington. The second assistant referee is Jennifer Politz. And the alternate official tonight is Aaron Plitch. You don't see very often an all-women referee crew in soccer. I, I'm happy to see it. There you see the uh, quick cleanup of Moffitt. And she will return to the lineup, turn to the field. LSU has had as many as nine freshmen and sophomores on the field at the same time this year. So nine of the 11 have been young underclassmen at times on the field at the same time this year. This is match four of the 10 matches that are scheduled among SEC teams, which brings me to my second point tonight. I really would like to see the Southeastern Conference play a true schedule where you play all 13 teams during the regular season as your true conference schedule and don't have uh, teams that you don't play in some years. So you, you're missing three schools each year with this 10-game format. Well, Reese Moffitt apparently is going back to the sideline now. And she could possibly have some blood showing through her sock. And, and that's, that's one of the really tight rules. If, you know, really in all, all college sports, if there is any blood, you're off. The only goal tonight came relatively early on a breakaway by Alex Thomas. She very patiently 
fed it across the box to Adrian Richardson. And the sophomore from Oakdale, Minnesota, worked it sharply by the goalkeeper, Alex Plavin, for the 1-0 LSU lead. Plavin this year has four shutouts and obviously will not get one tonight. Caffey enters the game for LSU. She's got one goal, the sophomore out of Port St. Lucie, Florida. Tiana Caffey and Gabby Duca comes in for Alabama. We've got about 10 minutes remaining in the opening period. Alexander working on the far sideline. Has two defenders in front of her. Reverses. Leaves it for a teammate. This is popped up to the middle of the field. And the Tigers will be regrouping here. Alabama is coming off a, or excuse me, LSU coming off a four to one loss to Florida. Eight and a half to go in the opening period. Alabama would really like to get a goal here heading into halftime. Um, you know, it kind of changes your halftime you know, philosophy, what you need to do a little bit. Are you tied? Are you down? You know, what do we need to do? So I think they might really try to regroup and try to see if they can't get one in here in the last couple minutes of this Al half. Alabama's last action was at home against Arkansas, losing one nothing to the Razorbacks and the Crimson Tide, three days before that, on the 20th, lost in Nashville to Vanderbilt 3-2. to two. You know, Alabama's um, SEC losses have all been one-goal losses, so they've been really close in every game they've played here in the SEC. Ole Miss 1-0, Arkansas 1-0, and Vanderbilt 3-2. Six matches remain in the season for Alabama. Three of them will be at home. Goalkeepers are a bit of a special breed at times, aren't they? Absolutely they are. Kind of probably an understatement. They were a very special breed. And really, you know, their training is just completely different than everyone on the rest of the field. You know, we talked earlier about uh, Caroline Brockmeyer coming out on that ball and with all of those people around it, feet flying. You know, it takes a real bravery to be a goalkeeper. You've got balls being pegged at you every day at practice, in games. You have to have a lot of bravery. You can't be scared. Let's update Brockmeyer's numbers. She's got seven saves tonight in quest of her eighth shutout of the year. This will return to LSU. She is still ranked in the country on shutouts. Um, I think she's ranked number three in the country. Get up, get up, you got 
shutout tonight might might move her ahead to number two. Brockmeyer is second all time in LSU soccer history with 21 career shutouts. Mo Isom, who was a goalkeeper here from 2008 through 2011, is the career leader at LSU with 30 shutouts. Brockmeyer is looking for her 22nd career shutout tonight. We slide under the five minute mark in the first half. Katie Lockwood in, Taylor Morgan out for the Crimson Tide. Chrissy Petrie's arms are up on that player as she's mm -hmm. defending her. And, you know, while it, she might not even be intending to foul, anytime you have your arms up on their back, it's a real easy call for referees to make. They can see it really simple. So the free kick coming from distance inside the box. Boswell trying to work it down to create a passing angle. Reverses. Sends it out in front, and it is snared by Brockmeyer. It will stay with LSU and Alex Thomas will toss it in play. Less than three minutes remain in the opening period. Alabama in red, LSU in the satin white with the teal colored numerals. Abby Boswell looking for help. Pokes it to Wirtz. This is Boswell, defended by Thomas. And she took herself away from the angle, but it's poked in front, kicked away. Kicked away initially by Lucy Parker, it appeared, next to Brockmeyer. Alabama with a very, very good chance of sneaking it home, but it appeared that Lucy Parker was on the help here defensively. And that cross right there by Boswell was so nice, and she's wide open, and there's Lucy Parker there to help her goalkeeper. We talk about Brock Meyer, we talk about the shutouts, but, you know, all, you know, not just her, her defense, and all the times they are saving her, there's a great example of Lucy Parker coming in to clear the ball away. And that's going to be a free kick. Free, free kick, Crimson Tide. One, one minute. minute. 
Less than a minute to play in the opening period. LSU got an early goal from Richardson off the assist by Thomas. Let's see if the Tigers and can get comes, one more opportunity. I was going to say, here comes Richardson. She's streaking up the side again. Off the ball. But they were unable to make that final pass. Clark tries to center it. Nobody is home. And the first half is over here in Baton Rouge. The LSU Tigers and the Alabama Crimson Tide. SEC action tonight on the SEC ESPN Network. An early goal by Richardson. It has stood up. 1-0 LSU at the break. We'll return to the LSU Soccer Complex in a moment with more on the SEC ESPN Network. LSU won. Alabama nothing at the break. Hello, fellow, fellow citizens, and welcome back to Baton Rouge. We're at the LSU Soccer Complex tonight. We have avoided the rain. We're at the break. LSU with an early goal leads it 1-0. Debbie Hensley, Lynn Rollins with you. And, Debbie, let's get right to first half highlights. About five minutes into it, it was Alex Thomas to Adrian Richardson. And it was just an unbelievable pass by Alex Thomas, and Adrian Richardson took that so smooth. Great pickoff. Again, she jumps up, gets a great shot. Great opportunity on goal. From here, both defenses played well. Both goalkeepers denied the other team after the uh, early goal by Richardson, and both teams had some opportunities to advance the score. And that was a really brave save right there by Brockmeyer to jump into that bunch of legs and feet. 
Well, let's look at the first half numbers. Alabama outshot LSU, but not by a lot, 10-8. However, seven shots on goal, only three for the Tigers. Three fouls for the Crimson Tide, six for LSU. Five corner kicks against three for LSU, and no offsides penalties by either team in the first half. So it's 1-0 LSU at the break, leading in Baton Rouge over the Crimson Tide. More in a moment on the SEC ESPN Network. We've got a wet turf tonight, but it has not dampened the action. Alabama and LSU at the break in Baton Rouge. LSU with an early goal, making it stand up 1-0. Welcome back to the LSU Soccer Complex with Debbie Hensley. I'm Lynn Rollins. Debbie, let's cast our gaze a little farther than this location as we look at this week's United Soccer Coaches Top 20. Now, there are three SEC teams in the Top 20. You see... Stanford and South Southern California, both with eight 0-1 records at number one and two. A bit of a change this week uh, among the top 20. It's nice to see Texas A&M from the SEC getting in that top 10, landing right there at number five. And you'll see two other SEC teams in the next uh, 10, Tennessee number 12. And South Carolina, number 14. We don't see Vanderbilt in there yet, and Vanderbilt actually leads the Southeastern Conference with 10 victories and one setback and 3-0 and in the league. By the way, a couple of other teams uh, are in the next five, so Auburn and Vanderbilt are in the, uh, the top 25 between number 21 and number 25. So the SEC pretty well represented. A lot of soccer to be played. This is only the fourth match. There are 10 SEC league matches during the regular season. A lot can change over the next month. Definitely, and I think that we will see some other teams move into the top 20. LSU looking to ignite its season. one nothing right now over Alabama. We'll be right back with more from Baton Rouge after this brief timeout.
We've got more soccer for you tonight with the second half just a few moments away as LSU is protecting a 1-0 lead over Alabama. But our next telecast will be Sunday, September 30th. It's LSU Volleyball. The Tigers are hosting Texas A&M. That's at 1 o'clock Central Time this Sunday from the Maribich Assembly Center. LSU Texas A&M Volleyball, our next presentation on the SEC ESPN Network. We'll come back with the second half from Baton Rouge. LSU won. Alabama nothing. We're in Baton Rouge tonight as we return to action. The second half coming your way in seconds. LSU protecting a 1-0 halftime lead over the Alabama Crimson Tide. Both of these teams are looking to break into the win column in SEC play as we encounter our fourth match out of 10 league contests tonight. Alabama visiting LSU in a very light rain has started to fall here. It was raining hard throughout the afternoon. The rain abated about 90 minutes before the match. We did not have any rain in the first half, but there appears to be a very light rain falling right now. And we do expect, uh, according to the radar, to get some light rain uh, in the next uh, few minutes, perhaps uh, over the course of the, uh, of the second half. But we do not see any thunderstorms or any lightning at this point as we continue to play here and get ready for the second half. Debbie Hensley, Lynn Rollins with you. Thank you so much for joining us. We are delighted to have you in our audience tonight. And Debbie, both of these teams, I'm sure, talked about the urgency of getting started early in this second half and getting on the board in the win column in the SEC. This half... Really, you kind of feel the same way you did at the beginning of the game. Both teams have such an urgency to get their first SEC win of the season, and that starts with starting each half with an attacking mindset. Let's get on the board. Let's get this victory. Let's go win it. 
Alabama in red, LSU in the satin white tonight with the teal colored numerals and lettering in honor of the uh, annual ovarian cancer observance and an effort to educate all people about ovarian cancer. That's hooked up on top of the net. And a free kick will be coming for LSU. Caroline Brockmeyer is halfway to her eighth shutout of the year. She was tested, especially during the last 10 or 12 minutes of the first half. She has, for all of her shutouts this year, had to come up with big saves, and tonight is no different. Casey Wirtz, the leading goal producer by far for Alabama, has started the second half. She did not come into the game until perhaps 20 or 25 minutes had elapsed in the first half. Wirtz normally is a starter, not so tonight for undisclosed reasons, but she has returned and is most likely to play just about every minute of the second half. That shot is deflected and then Brockmeyer knocks it loose. And you can see Caroline Brockmeyer right there having words with her defenders, telling them you've got to step to her sooner. You cannot let her shoot. Alabama has had a relatively large number of corner kicks tonight. I think this is number seven. That was the sixth corner kick for Alabama. A couple of them have put extreme pressure on Brockmeyer and her teammates. The corner kicks are one of the, the most frequent way for teams to score. They're very dangerous. They're very hard to defend. If you have a really good corner kick taker that can really swing the ball in there, it's it puts a lot of pressure on your defense. Corner kickers are specialists in their own right, aren't they? They are because, you know, there's a fine line. Sometimes you see corner kickers, you know, and they kick the ball out of bounds and you get kind of aggravated like, hey, you got the whole field right here that you could, you could, that you have. How'd you kick, kick it out of bounds? But, you know, they're really trying to place it in a very specific spot. Only, you know, sometimes it's let's go near post, let's have it this height. So, I mean, they're really um, trying to do something very specific. You know, we've talked about some of these players that are both right and left-footed and, and what a big advantage that is for corner kick takers. The officials are repositioning LSU's defenders on this free kick. It's chipped into the box, and Brockmeyer leaves the net and comes a long way to get it. LSU really for the first time in the second half. Sets it up offensively. This is Alex Thomas trying to beat the defenders to the ball. It was a great pass by Adrian Richardson. It's like threading a needle right into that box to Alex Moffitt Thomas. Moffitt with the left foot, hooks it through the box. Nobody is there for LSU. Seven out of the last eight times these teams have played, it has gone to double overtime. You can see our... Adrian Richardson's feet got tangled in there causing that foul. Really, I think she was just trying to keep up. Alabama leads the series history. They've played 23 times. Alabama has won 11. LSU with seven victories. There have been five draws. The last two games have ended in double overtime draws. Seven of the last eight have gone into extra periods. Yeah. 
Taylor Morgan sends it to the left side. That's centered, but it's on the foot of LSU. And lost out of bounds by Lindsey Eaton, the sophomore from Florida. You know, we've talked a lot about Alabama's uh, forward, Casey Wirtz, who is their leading scorer, but they've actually shown a lot of depth in their attack with 12 different players scoring or tallying a goal or an assist in their 12 games. So they, get, they have lots of fire potential in that attacking group. Wirtz with the six goals, she does not have an assist. Boswell has three goals and five assists. She's the next leading goal producer. And then you've got Emma Welch with a couple of goals. And a lot of other players with one goal. That was right there out in front again and Brockmeyer was able to get to it. Here come the Tigers. Yeah, I think Alabama might like to see that one again as that ball just sort of dropped right in front of the goal. They would have liked to have seen somebody jump on it a little faster than, you know, allowing Caroline Brockmeyer to come out and pick it up so easily. That pass is easily intercepted by Eaton. Takes it down the left side, looking for some help. Leaves it to the middle for Alex Thomas. This is Tudora. Tudora from distance, and it rolls into the hands of Alex Plavin. Four shutouts for Plavin this year, a 1.04 goals against average. Brockmeyer's goals against average is 0.98, and that number leaped a bit after giving up four goals to Florida. Wes Hart, fourth season as Alabama head coach, one game under 500 overall, led Alabama to an NCAA tournament berth. Oh, wow. Brockmeyer right there to take one at point blank range. You could hear it reverberate off the players and Brockmeyer just that, stayed tough in the net. She did. That cross was an absolute bullet, and you could see just as that ball was coming across, there was an Alabama player right there, and Brockmeyer was right there to block the shot. We will show you that again when we get the opportunity. Brockmeyer would not allow that ball to get into the net. We keep saying she's had to make some really amazing saves to maintain some of these shutouts she's had. And, you know, every game we think, wow, that's such an awesome save. Is she really going to have another one better than that? And then the next game comes and she does. Let's go back and look at this cross right here. It was a great pass to free her up for the cross. A great cross in. Brockmeyer took it right off the chest. This is a tremendous pass. And you see Brockmeyer somehow able to stop it. She had 11 saves against Auburn, many of them of spectacular fashion, and nine tonight. 12 is her career high in a single game. LSU has been guilty of nine fouls. That's a bit excessive. It's loose in front, and LSU pokes it away. Getting a foot on it and sending it over the end line was Lucy Parker. Richardson lines it up, sends it to the right side. This is Molly Thompson stri 
straight to the goal. Uh, and she's going to wish that Alex Thomas maybe had gotten in there to try to cut that off in front of the goalkeeper. I actually thought it was going to be deflected out for a corner kick, but she uh, managed to keep that ball in bounds. We have been informed that Tanea Alexander has been assessed a yellow card. That was a quick yellow card out of our view, but uh, Alexander apparently has been, there she is, but a yellow card has been assessed apparently on Tanea Alexander. She'll throw it in from the sideline. LSU trying to stretch its lead. It's a tenuous one goal advantage right now on the first period goal by Richardson from the Alex Thomas assist. This should be a corner kick coming up for LSU. And it will be only the fourth Jesus tonight. Thunder Sticks fans, it's a corner kick. Shooter up will put it in play, and from the right corner, she will probably use her left foot. That's correct. She's going to want to try to swing this ball so it has an in-swing coming towards the goal. Those are the harder ones for the opponents to, you know, get out. They're easier for LSU to get in. And it's a great kick. And a miss, and then some from the left foot from outside the box. That one just took off. It did. You hope when that ball kind of pops down on those corner kicks, you have someone out there who's ready to just really fire a good shot on goal. But, uh, you know, they're tough. Sometimes they come out there bouncing, and they're not the easiest shots to take. Eleven and a half minutes have gone in the second period. LSU's one goal lead remains one nothing. Alabama's doing a great job of getting players forward. You can see in the box right now, there's at least five players in there waiting for the ball to get crossed in. And that's what you want. They know they need to get on the board. They probably are not focusing on defense. If their players were asking questions about defense at halftime, I wouldn't be surprised if they said, hey, listen, we have got to score. We've got to get in the box because their players are really pushing forward this half. Neely Martin was well defended by Lindsey Eaton. Gabby Duca, who played in the first half, comes back into the game for Alabama and replaces Casey Wirtz. So Alabama, for the moment, without its leading scorer with six goals, Casey Wirtz. I do not think Casey Wirtz has had a shot tonight. She has not. Alabama came out with two forwards. Oh 
And then five midfielders and three defensemen. This will be another corner kick coming from Emma Welch. The senior with a couple of goals and a pair of assists to her credit. That one's hooking out in front. A lot of contact, loose ball, re-kicked and redirected, and it will go back to LSU. You can see Brockmeyer's got that towel ready. Here this ball comes in. She gets her hands on it. I couldn't really tell what that what went on. You know, she's got that towel back there because, you know, we, we talked about the, the rain, that little bit of rain and the littlest thing when you're a goalkeeper, you know, being able to grip that ball, I mean, it means everything. You've seen a couple times already where she's kind of come out to catch balls and they're kind of coming off of her gloves. She, you can see her messing with her gloves quite a bit, you know, and, and, and that's due to that dampness out there. It really affects the goalkeepers. Oh, Rockmeyer wow. once again leaning to her left to take a shot from six feet away. Watch Brockmeyer react. She goes from one post, leans and dives back to the middle of the net to her left to save it. Here comes Alabama again. Alabama's really had control of this half so far. They're definitely knocking on the door. Neely Martin sends it down to the right of the box. Defended by Moffitt. We slide under the 29 minute mark. One nothing, LSU. Taylor Hubbard comes back into the match for Alabama. And Riley Mattingly returns to the sideline. Brockmeyer again. A two-handed tip over the net. She has been tested in a lot of ways. This ball redirected and watch Brockmeyer punch it up, leaping and sending it over the crossbar. Just about every kind of save possible tonight Brockmeyer has made. Alabama. Keeps applying pressure. 11 saves for Brockmeyer. One short of her career high. And here comes Alabama again. The Crimson Tide has been much more aggressive coming out of the locker room than it was in the first half, although it did apply a lot of pressure to Brockmeyer in the final 10 minutes of the first period. They've definitely brought an offensive attack into this half. LSU is doing a really poor job of man marking in the box. So you know, players are going to get crosses off, but you, when the ball is in the box defensively, you want to be man marking. You want to be tight on that player. And what we keep seeing over and over again is a cross coming in and an Alabama player that has a wide open look at the goal. That can't happen. 14 shots tonight for Alabama, 11 of them on goal. That's a very high percentage. Very high. They're doing a great job offensively this half. And Brockmeyer is equal to the task 11 times. You know, and LSU is just really struggling to put some passes together. So, you know, when they do get possession of the ball here in their half, they are kind of losing it two or three passes beyond possession. That slides off to the right side. Tudor runs it down near midfield. 
Richardson can't get to it, it's headed away. But Alexander is there for LSU. This is Richardson on the move. Oh, yes! Richardson from the right side, her second goal. That was another great finish by Richardson. She's really got a knack for putting it away when she gets in there. A great little flick from Tiana Alexander, and she just drives straight to the goal. Goalkeeper gets her hand on it, but it is struck so strong that she doesn't have a chance. Alabama is making a case for offsides against LSU, but right now the goal stands. Richardson, her sixth goal, two tonight. In fact, if memory serves, Debbie, Richardson's six goals have come in three games. She's got dual goals in three matches this year. When she's on, she's on. That is a huge goal because it was Alabama providing the pressure. And Alabama, minute after minute after minute, cranking good shots at Brockmeyer, each of them rejected. And all of a sudden on a breakout, it was Richardson who smashed one off the hands of Plavin and into the goal, 2-0 LSU. You know, that can really take the, the wind out of the sails when, when you have a goal come against the flow of play. We would call that a goal against the flow of play because the flow of play, like you said, it was all Alabama, all Alabama. And here she goes. She might be free again. Richardson lets it fly, and it's deflected by Plavin, who got a hand on it and rerouted it. Richardson is calling for a corner kick. She thinks maybe the goalkeeper did get her Goal hand kick. on that. I thought she did. Richardson lines it up right here. It's kind of hard to tell. I would have liked to have seen Adrian take that ball and really drive towards the goal a little more, try to get a better angle. She really didn't have a great shooting angle from there, but, you know, it still is a challenge for the goalkeeper, and in most cases that's going to lead to either a deflection or a corner kick. We near the midway point of the second period. Richardson with a first period goal and a second half goal. Hubbard looking for the return pass. Key your right, key your right. This is Hubbard. Guarded by LSU's Moffitt. The young defender from Canada. Chudera with her foot on it. LSU cannot clear. Still pressure applied by Alabama. That was a joust of sorts just outside the box. Jade Clark defending for LSU. Alabama continues to apply pressure. Hubbard. It will stay with Alabama. Brian Lee disagrees on the sideline. Debbie, you coached with him for several years. He's not a guy who carps a lot just to hear himself talk. No, if, he, if he's got an argument that he you know, really is, feels strongly about, he's going to let the referees know about it. Here goes another great pass into Adrian. From Alexander, Richardson lines it up, tries to hook it in on the right side and did not get enough slice on it to work it back toward the middle. She did not. I think she actually could have probably taken another touch on that ball just to get a better strike. You see she cut it, cut it back to get the angle and uh, tried to hook it into that corner. It was a great idea. Jade Clark was running down there to try to provide an option as well. You always want your players following up, even if they're not going to get the pass. There might be a rebound. There might be the ball hitting off the post. You want that those players standing there in the box waiting. A lot of goals are not scored off the initial shot, but off of the deflection of the keeper, the deflection off of a post, the deflection off of a blocked shot, all those things. Chudera. Sends it away from trouble all the way across the field to Alex Thomas. 
Alex Thomas had a first period assist. another cross and it didn't make it through but it looked like Emma Thompson was standing wide open inside the 18. That's kind of what we were talking about before. Alabama keeps getting these crosses in and they've got they've got too many players open inside the box. LSU really needs to try to find those open players when they don't have the ball and get a man on them and get man marking them. LSU had eight players who played the entire first half. Rockmeyer of course in goal. Moffitt Richie Williams, Parker, Thomas, Richardson, Alexander, and Newton all played the first half without a break. Plavin in goal, of course, along with both Martins, Brent, and Neely. Boswell, Bivens, and Verpaley all played all 45 minutes in the first half for Alabama. And here comes Casey Wirtz back in the game, see if she could help provide an offensive punch for her team. She's taken out Emma Thompson. 16 shots by Alabama tonight, 11 of them on goal, all of them rejected by Brockmeyer. LSU has had 13 shots, only five on goal, but two have found the scoreboard. Two great finishes from Adrian Richardson. This is Clark, younger sister of former LSU star Summer Clark. Jade Clark will put it in play. That was actually a really good job of saving the corner kick. It looked like it was very easily just going to roll out for a corner kick, and she managed to get it out for a throw in. And now she will yield to Petrie, who apparently will throw it in. Christina, a three-year letter winner out of Austin, Texas. And the ball kids are really the all-stars when it's wet out. You can see the girl with the towel, and she's trying to get the ball dry because, um, you know, it's hard to throw the ball when it's wet. Tudor got ahead on it. There a free kick coming. It's a little push from behind on Abby Newton there right before she got rid of the ball. She did a great job getting rid of the ball and getting it to safety. Uh, and, you know, she had a lot of pressure on her back. You know, the physicality of the game, especially the SEC games for these freshmen, is something that takes a little while to get used to. You know, Abby Newton is coming from club. It's, it's kind of a different game. And... You know, it's, it's exhausting on your body um, and something you're not used to when you get into college soccer. Less than 19 minutes remain. LSU with a goal in each half. Alex uh, Thomas tries to take it away. A lot of contact. Alabama maintaining possession. Riley Mattingly goes back in for Alabama, and Molly Thompson will enter the game for LSU. And Alexander will get a rest. Probably three or four minutes, five minutes top, she'll be back in. Yeah, as a reminder, the second half, you're going to see a little more subbing than you did in the first half. Everybody's allowed one re-entry, so if you start the game, you can, re you can come out and you can re-enter once. If you didn't start and you came in in the second half, again, you can come out and you can go back in because you are allowed one re-entry. It's a bookkeeping job of its own just to keep up with all the re-entry. That's done from the sideline. 
Caffey will check in for the first time in this half. She played some in the first period. And uh, Chudera will get a rest. Chudera, in many ways, is one of those players who does not make headlines, but does make things work for LSU. Yeah, she's she's really the the engine there in the middle of the field, and and you're right. A lot of times, soccer is kind of a different sport where you get a lot of attention when you're a forward and you score the goals. You get a lot of attention when you're the goalkeeper and you have the shutouts. But when you're the center midfielder, and all you're doing is just running and working and working and working, you're the little engine that could. Sometimes you don't get all of the attention, but you know, to the players on the team, you know, to the coaches, you know, it, it doesn't go unseen. But, you know, sometimes you don't see their name as much in the headlines. Tori Gann enters the fray for Alabama. And we're told that Chudera will outrun just about everybody in every match. She does. She's, she's constantly going from the beginning to the end. Just over 16 minutes remain. As we come to the 74 minute mark, Adrian Richardson has knocked in a goal in each half for LSU. Caffey from the center, can't clear it. Oh, and a good stick there by Reese Moffitt. Moffitt took it away cleanly, sends it ahead to Caffey. To the right side it goes. From distance, and it slides by on the left side. You know, sometimes you see players come diving into the middle of the field when when you're in a position where Molly Thompson was, sometimes the best thing to do is to stay out wide because what they do is they drag their defender into the middle and it just sort of clogs up the middle, uh, makes it harder to make a pass. You know, I would have liked to have seen LSU's players kind of spread, you know, come forward but stay out wide so that there were some open passing lanes or Molly had the space to take on a player and really go to goal. Richie Williams. Sends it to midfield, Alabama is waiting. LSU gets it back, Caffey punches it down low. Richardson lines it up, approaching the 18, dribbles to the right side, lets it fly, and it's deflected away by Plavin. That's a and she chose to go fast, got herself some space, and took a really nice shot. That was a great save by Alex Plavin. That ball was going in the net if she didn't get her arm on it. Richardson will get her first rest of the second half. No, she'll stay in the contest. Well, she's going to take the corner kick. Tudera is out right now. She <laughs> normally handles all the corner kicking. Yeah. They're so used to Chudera taking all of the corner kicks that when she comes out of the game, everyone kind of looks around at each other like, who's supposed to take it? She's not here. Alabama needs two goals to tie, and there are 13 and a half minutes remaining in this match in Baton Rouge. Richardson with a couple of goals. Thomas and Alexander with the assist tonight. So three times in the 2018 season, Richardson has had a two-goal performance. Sometimes you see that with players. I think in all sports, you know, when they're feeling good, you know, maybe they like the matchup. Maybe they have some confidence they've built early in the game. And you see, you know, multiple production performances from them and you know Adrian certainly seems to, to be one of those players when she feels like she's got a good matchup or she feels the confidence to take on the defender and go to goal you, you're going to see her score more than one goal. Emma Thomas takes it away for Alabama. 
LSU with a little bit of breathing room now. Two up on the Crimson Tide. Arkansas has shut out Missouri, that game in Fayetteville tonight. The Razorbacks beat the Missouri Tigers 1-0. Caroline Brockmeyer is seeking her eighth shutout this year, her 22nd in her career. But there are still 12 minutes to be played. Debbie, let's backtrack a little bit. When we showed you the early numbers or numbers coming into this game for both teams, it was interesting to me that Alabama had 28 goals, which is a respectable number through the first half of the season. But again, 21 of those, all but seven of those goals came against four non-conference opponents. So Alabama's attack in conference play and against the better non-conference opponents not nearly as good as it was against those four easy wins. They had five goals in three games and six in another one. LSU only had 14 goals coming in, but of course the defense by LSU has been a cut above this year and Brockmeyer continues to be brilliant in goal, but LSU needed to find an attack against Alabama and has to a certain extent tonight. You know. So 16 goals now as a team for LSU and six of those belong to Richardson. They do, they belong to Richardson, six of them, but they also, you know, as we've seen before, they have multiple players who have the capability of scoring, who have scored in the games. And, you know, it, it's good to know, you know, both of these teams have multiple players that have scored. Um, but, you know, you. you there's something really positive in having Adrian score two goals in a conference game. I think that she could really build on this moving into the rest of the conference games. Get up! Get up! Get up! LSU with some excellent defense. And now trying to mount an attack. This is Molly Thompson. Thompson fakes right, dribbles left. Thompson on the move. Thompson crossover dribble. Thompson right side looking for some help. Centers it up. This is from distance, and it slides off. Kathy never really hit it solidly. She's got one goal this season, the sophomore out of Port Lucie, Florida. With some fancy footwork from Molly. She uh, got her player a little off balance, kept cutting the ball back. Tiana Caffey really got that ball stuck under her foot. I know she could shoot better than that. I know if she had it to do again, she'd take a little touch and get a better shot, shot off. And there's towels all over these sidelines trying to dry these balls off so that they can get thrown in. Reese Moffitt lobs it in play. And it will remain with LSU. A free kick coming. Free kick, Tigers. Reese Moffat out of Langley, British Columbia, Canada. Less than eight and a half minutes are left. Caroline, Kate, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, Casey Works. I mean, that was a great opportunity for a cross. She really, she really hit it nice and strong. You know, I want to see Alabama get back to what they were doing uh, at the beginning of this half, getting the ball out wide and getting the ball crossed in the box. LSU was really having a hard time defending those. And um, after LSU scored, they kind of abandoned that. And I would like to see them get back to it um, as it was very successful here at the beginning of this half. 
The point I was going to make was that, yes, Brockmeyer has had several sensational saves, but she has also benefited from some really nice help and some defensive pokeaways by teammates right at the goal. It's been a team shutout to this point for LSU. Yeah, I mean, really every shutout is going to be that way. You know, you, you really highlight and notice the really huge saves that the goalkeeper makes. But what you don't notice is all of the times the shots didn't get off because the teammate, what your teammate, your defender was there to stop the shot. Martinson, who just came back in, the senior from Stockholm, Sweden, tries to line it up. She's got it again. And it's poked away. She tried the crossover dribble, but easily... Rejected by Richardson. Hey, 20, Adrian. Emma Thompson throws it to the box. Alabama has been shut out through 84 minutes. There's Brock Meyer again. That cross was a little too direct, a little lofted, a little too easily towards the goal. She needs to really get that ball driven across the goal, away from the goalkeeper where her, her players can be there to get on the end of it. We move across the 84-minute mark, 2-0 LSU. Richardson's first and second half goals have stood up to this point. The young lady with the ball now, Alex Thomas, had a beautiful crossing pass for the assist on the first goal about five minutes into the match. Right now, LSU can afford to take the extra pass if undefended. Five and a half to play. This is Richardson. Richardson tries to leave it inside. Left-footed drive on its way and rejected by Plavin. And you can see Richardson just led Molly Thompson to that ball. Molly took it with her left foot and is saved by the keeper. It's going to be out for a corner kick. Tudor is back in. She'll take the corner kick with her left foot. Lucy Parker left her feet, tried to do the bicycle kick, but never really got turned over on the ball. Boswell. This is Wirtz. Goes down That's deep, a great centers cross. it. And rejected. And some contact there, and a couple of players slow to get up. Everybody seems to be all right. Four minutes separate LSU from its first SEC victory. Two nothing Tigers. Just over three minutes remain. This is the fourth SEC match for both of these teams. LSU is drawing closer to its first SEC victory.
Emma Welch with the corner kick. That is Molly Thompson, who is shaken up after heading that entry in away. Watch Thompson, number 34, right there. Looked like she made contact with uh, Kaylee Verpaley. I think so, and, and Brockmeyer did a fantastic job. That, that corner kick was really hard to defend. She had to really come up there on that near post and clear it. She did a great job on that. Alexander re-enters the game for LSU, replacing the injured or shaken up Molly Thompson. Two and a half to go. We slip under the two minute mark. LSU did a better job of defending that cross. Looked like they had all the players covered. Really attacked the ball when it came. The Tigers are trying to salt this away on the strength of first and second half goals from Adrian Richardson. Assists by Thomas and Alexander. The clock is ticking down in the favor of LSU. So the Crimson Tide will go to six, six and one on the season. Winless in four SEC matches. LSU advances to seven, four and one on the year and earns its first Southeastern Conference victory in four tries. The Tigers in the league are now one, two and one. Another shutout performance by Brockmeyer, her eighth of the year. Richardson with her third two-goal effort of the season. And LSU led one nothing at the break, adds another one in the second half. And a complete victory, Debbie Hensley, as LSU does get into that win column in the SEC. They definitely are going to be taking this game and trying to propel it here moving forward. You need to taste that 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 feeling of winning an SEC game and 
And LSU, I know they're feeling really good today. I think that they are off for the second match of this weekend. So they're going to have some time to get their legs back under them. And I think uh, they will come out with a renewed confidence in the SEC play moving into their next match. So that's the story from Louisiana's capital. For Debbie Hensley, I'm Lynn Rollins. Saying so long from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where the final score is LSU 2, Alabama nothing to watch this entire match on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.